Hi YouTube, welcome back to the channel. This week I was lucky enough to have two of the new Ryzen 4 series APUs delivered, the 4350G and the 4650G. Now these G professional chips are exactly the same as the 4300G and 4600G, but they do contain some slight additional security um, bits and bobs that are good for business applications, but they are intents and purposes the same processor and will be for performance. The unknown question at this point is just whether these will become the new 3200 and 3400G. I think it's very likely, but we'll get onto that later. This video will be concentrating on the 4350G, and sometime next week I'll release a similar video for the 4650G looking at just what that does. But first of all, let's have a look at some specs. This is a 4 core, 8 thread processor, a base clock of 3.8 GHz, and a boost up to 4. Here we are compared to the 3200G, and as, as I said earlier, the 4300G is the same as the 4350G Professional. As you can see, a slightly higher base clock, the turbo is the same, all core turbo is a bit better, um, but really it's, it's the AMD 6 graphics that are the big development on this processor over, last gen, over the last gen. Here we are with 3400G, again you can see the processor slightly faster, and it'd be interesting to see just how this compares, the 4300G compares to the 3400G. Um, and see just how close they are. And just because we can, here's the AMD Ryzen 3100, which I also have. As you can see, it's a, it's a slightly better, slightly faster turbo clock, but that, that difference in cache, I think, will make all the difference. And as you come to testing, you'll, you'll see what it looks like. So first of all, let's just show you in the, in the system. Now, it was quite a palaver to get these to work. I'd initially tried to put this into my MSI B450 Pro 2 motherboard, but it wouldn't boot, and at the moment there doesn't seem to be a, a BIOS update available for that board. However, in my B550 MSI B550 mortar, it did boot, albeit initially showing up as a 4200G initially, uh, interestingly, but it did boot. It did then require a BIOS update in order for it to recognise the chip as a 4350G, and then of course I updated the AMD graphics drivers to enable it to actually finally display through the motherboard. So quite a palaver, not that straightforward. This is not yet an out of the box solution. So you can see the process in situ. Let's have a look at some benchmarks. Here we have Cinebench R20. You can see we have a, a multi-core a multi score of 2097 and a single core score of 437. Pretty respectable for a processor of, of this site. Now compared to some of the other processors, I've also compared to the 3200G and the 3400G. And in terms of base processing power, a much faster processor. Compared to the 3100, a little slower, but not far off the case. That additional cache, I think, in the 3100 will make a difference. Moving on then to Geekbench 5. 1118 in the single core and 4483 in the multi-core. Again, a pretty decent score. And then when we look at the comparators against the 3200G, really significantly outperforming that processor. The 3400G is still way ahead, 20, 25%. And again, the 3100 does come out just ahead, um, but not unexpected for a, the 3100, which is a, an excellent processor, but without onboard graphics. Okay, so let's have a look at some games benchmarking. For so Horizon 4. Now, just to say, all of the video capture here was done using OBS. So what you're seeing isn't really indicative of the actual performance. So on Forza Horizon 4 on medium settings, we managed to get 39 frames per second, 35 from the old 3200G, and 40 from the old 3400G, so pretty much on par. So as I was saying, the gameplay you're seeing is a bit slower than it would be without me actually using OBS. I should really get a game capture card and we'll do going forward. Um, so please don't think this is indicative of performance, but it really held up well. 40 frames per second for a game like this is, is certainly very playable. Uh, on medium settings it looks really good as well, so overall very impressed with this. Fortnite, 1080p normal settings. Now on normal settings we're getting right just over the, the magic 60fps at 70, which compares quite favourably both to the 3200G and the 3400G, which is slightly, slightly lower than this. Again very playable, you could of course knock this down to 720 if you're really desperate for, for frame rates but if you're not an absolutely competitive esports player and frankly if you're looking at this this processor resolution you're really in the wrong place 
um, this is a very very good solution played really well moving on then to Valorant 1080p high settings didn't really struggle at all with this I think Valorant is quite a straightforward game to play um, it really suits a, an APU of this sort 119 frames per second on average the 3200G scored 90 and the 3400G was at 109 so slightly outstripping the previous Ryzen 5 processor from last year this is very playable absolutely fine to play this game looks really good moving on again then GTA 5 an absolute must for any games testing now here we were at 1080p normal and we hit just just about hitting 60 FPS there's occasional dip and that's a genuine 58 FPS compares quite very good to the 3200G and pretty much on par with the 3400G from last year as I was saying it's a really genuine 58 FPS um, this isn't obviously if you go into the map screen there that on your FPS will shoot quite up this is proper gameplay again a very playable at 60 FPS at normal settings at 1080p is a very playable experience for GTA 5 moving on then to CSGO this really was again at a fairly decent performance high frame rates 1080p high settings 80 frames per second 25% higher than the 3200G and pretty much on par with the 3400G again so this Ryzen 3 process on the onboard graphics are a real, real step up from, from last year's processors of course with this you can drop down the resolution to medium perhaps if you want slightly higher FPS but again for me these frame rates are fine very very playable next up then with a, another racing game Project Cars 2 1080p medium settings This again was very playable. Racing games, I think anything over 40 is really good. So scoring 43 here on par again with the Ryzen 5 from last year and 10% up on the 3200G, its predecessor from last year as well. As I was saying, please don't look at the FPS at the top left hand corner here. This is just because I'm using OBS, it did have a real a real significant impact on the frame rates 20-25% drop from what I was getting when OBS wasn't running unsurprising really I mean the, the inbuilt graphics on this processor was really taking a pounding as you can see pretty much at 100% all the way through this so here we are with the Overwatch 110 frames per second on low settings it's a good 30% higher than the 3200G of last year and significantly higher than the 3400G from what I can see Again, looks really good, very playable. Don't think you can ask much more from a, the inbuilt graphics of a Ryzen 3 processor. Moving on then to Rocket League, an absolute favourite of mine. So on performance settings we get 97 FPS, a big chunk higher than the 3200 g and a bit higher than the 3400G. It isn't a hugely graphic card intensive game, so a decent processor with the inbuilt graphics here was absolutely perfect for this game. Pretty decent have frame rates, very very playable. I did do a quick bit of emulation testing. RPCS3, Gods of War played fine. Mario Kart and Zelda Breath of the Wild also hitting the right frame rates at the native resolutions. So this process can really emulate. I, I do plan to release a, a dedicated emulation video for both processors. So once I've done the 3650G review, um, then I'll do a, a joint emulation test for both processors to see how they, they compare. But
really very playable. Again, don't look at the FPS here. It took a really big hit from OBS, but I was getting pretty much 60 FPS on the nose all the way through gameplay when not recording. So, conclusions then. What's this processor for? Well, look, this is never going to be a replacement for a proper gaming PC in a GPU. If you're in the market for a home PC and want to do a bit of occasional gaming, a bit of occasional emulation, don't really want a particularly complex machine and looking for something quite cheap, this works really well. It's very capable. It certainly is capable of 1080p gaming at low to medium settings in most games. It'll be interesting to see how the 4650 compares to this, whether it's a significant jump up again. Um, but this is very much a, a usable processor. A step change compared to the 3200G definitely. In terms of value proposition, it's going to come down to how much this goes on the market for. Full transparency, I had to pay £150 or around $180 to get hold of this now. Um, obviously, that's going to be different when it's released properly on the market. I've no idea what it is. The closer to the $100, $120 mark this becomes, the more it becomes a value proposition. At $120, you're going to set up a new system with this in for around $350, all told. And that's very reasonable. That's a very reasonable price to be 1080p gaming in 2020. So I think very much a usable processor. Well, thanks for watching. Hope that's been useful. As I said, I'll be releasing the 4650G review video very soon. So do consider subscribing and putting on notifications. And do leave some comments below if you want me to test anything in particular game-wise or emulation-wise on that processor or retrospectively on this one as well. Interested to get your thoughts. Thanks for watching. Until the next one, go well.